Right, so, welcome back to the GDC. We have completed our first project, so congrats to you all. Uh, I have extended the deadline for the first game project contest, and the winner, as I said, will get all that Mi6 XP as needed. Um, also, speaking of those people who wanted to get uh, two people to collaborate with each other for the project, I'm completely okay with that. Uh, however, you will not get that entire 50,000 XP for each people. It'll be divided among each of you, so just keep that in mind, okay? Because it's a team effort, not that just one person has uh, uh, worked on it. All right, so what I I don't know why. <laughs> is it just because that I'm lagging because, because there's no light? Oh, that is the reason. That is the reason. Okay, I think I think it looks much better now. I'm really sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, so I was saying that I, I really like a lot of your projects. I really like your contribution. But one thing I want to talk about is not everyone games are good at the beginning. I saw that a lot of people were, like, trying to defend their argument, um, saying that their game looks good, even though there are many bugs. But this is some game developer advice that I want to give you. Even my game, okay, maybe I'm a bit better than you maybe in terms of experience for game development even i kind of suck at some places in game development so what i need to do is i need to get help from others right i need to get help from others thinking like is the game actually good because it's not you who's deciding whether the game is good it's the audience it's the audience is going to be playing the game that decides whether the game is good or not so since i've extended this deadline i really want you guys to let others play test your game okay i, I do not want you to just submit a game without having any playtesting done, okay? This is a contest. This is a bit like a contest level of game project submissions. And I already know that because this is our first game project and that doesn't necessarily mean your game has to be perfect. But when I say... You guys can hear me, right? Okay, I think you guys can hear me now. Um, so when I talk about playtesting and stuff, let others play it. Don't let one person just decide in your team that, okay, the game's pretty good. Um, you want to you wanna do your best. Just try doing your best trying to understand what you can do to make your game much better. And it requires a lot of test trials. It requires a lot of people playing your game, collaboration, and figuring out the bug fixes, the, th the, pinpo the pain points in your game that people don't like so they could try fixing it. If you don't want to fix it, that's totally up to you. That's the thing about game developers. But the sad thing about game developers is, although how successful you could become, this is one of the, this is one of the most uh, uh, famous careers where you can always get criticized for any work you do. So just keep that in your head. If you're a game designer, just just know that you're gonna be criticized millions of times. Even like big developers, like the maker of Overwatch, Jeff Kaplan, he also gets criticized all over the internet. He gets so many um, what do you call it? complaints, uh, jokes, sarcastic kind of stuff. Also, some really you know rude comments about him. But this is something we need to get about, uh, learn about. When we get criticism take it as an optimistic kind of piece of advice try to make your game much better from all the criticisms you get don't try to take it too personally this is just a game okay just like what we say when we play football or something don't take it too personally it's just a game you know it's about teamwork and having fun with each other and that's the same thing about games if you want to make your game a bit better just take any criticism as a piece of advice and that's essentially one really great building block as a great game developer it just kind of also increases your uh, the way you, you react to things and it's also good for your personal life so you know when someone tries to hurt your feelings you'll you'll not take it personally because that's the experience you'll earn from being a game developer and that is essentially why i really want many people in the world to be game developers because it's a really really great job to learn about self-reflection and uh, self uh, self improvement in terms of all these stuff because you're gonna mentally receive those type of pain. All right, so just make sure that this entire week you try getting help from others, like let other people play it and stuff. Let other people play test it. Um, don't try to make the game horrible in terms of sound and try to make it hilarious. Try to do your best, give your best effort because your game is gonna be shown in social media. Now, if your game is a bit like garbage, like you clearly know, because some people here already just want to make their game garbage and. Honestly, yeah, please go that way. I totally respect that. But the criticism will go on you. And, you know, pe some people might like it. You know, many people like garbage games. Even I like garbage games when I'm playing because it's actually hilarious and fun. That's the entire point, right? You want entertainment. But make sure this entire week you get help from other people. That's the point of GDC. Get help from other people. Uh, try to fix your bugs and stuff. And hopefully that will go well. Today, though, uh, this is not really a content-based type of class. Today, I just want to introduce ourselves to our new game project. So I'll 
I'll give like a partial like a uh, a game a gameplay clip of what I'm gonna do or, or what we're gonna essentially make, and we're also kind of like gonna talk about how to actually start a game, okay? Because the game development itself, it's it's really really important to understand how we start the brainstorming, the planning, because that's essentially the time period where you should take things seriously. Because that's the thing, that's a time of your life where you try to create a path of how to go to, in order to proceed your development of your game. And if you don't create a solidified path, if you don't create like a good foundation in the beginning, uh, it turns out you could, you will have to always go the hard way rather than the easy way. Because then you'll need to figure out really, really difficult. And you're going to have to start stressing and stuff. Uh, on figuring out like how to find solutions to some bugs but you know if you had a solidified path from the first place like why you want to make your games or what you need to specifically create or make your priorities then you don't have to cr go to that all that men mental hassle that it actually just hurts okay you'll be sleep deprived uh you will probably not be able to sleep a lot of time because you always want answers uh regarding some problems so always having a solidified path is crucial, especially in the game development world, because it takes a lot of time to make successful game projects. Like Fortnite, although now it's a very controversial game, it took six years to make, and to be honest, during the time when it was relevant, I was playing it as well. I mean, anytime a game is relevant, most of the people would play it. Until then, maybe in the future, it starts getting not as relevant, like we see that today. But we're trying to say that it takes a lot of planning and procedure and stuff to figure out how to start your game. And this is what we're going to go on today to, on talking about because we need to first figure out if you want to make our next game project. Now we know some foundations and ideas of Unity. We want to try to make our next game a bit better than our previous one. And this is something that I'll also do in your, in your uh, homework assignment. <laughs> I don't want to say homework, but like your personal task is to reflect upon your game that you made and figure out the pain points or like the, the pros, the cons that you did. And um try to list it out and in your next game we will try to figure that out like try to figure out a solution to that how to fix those type of problems and hopefully make our game much better than before because uh, what i want you guys to learn essentially from gdc is i don't want you to aim for a perfect score right like i don't i don't want everyone to teach uh, to ever to ever follow that type of path where i want 100 percent here i want 100 percent here no one's perfect i want to all teach you self-improvement this is much more important this is actually much way 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 better than being absolutely perfect when you try to be like a perfect ideal person in your head that's a hypothetical thing you might think of um what will happen eventually is you might maybe not even end up being that and people start regretting it but people never realize that it takes self-improvement to get there and i kind of want to get get you down to that really mini foundation that 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 building block of where this idea comes from it comes from self-improvement if you want to be a perfect person or almost like a perfect person you need to understand self-improvement you need to understand discipline you need to understand how to make yourself person uh, how to make yourself a better person and also through that through self-learning because self-learning is really really important especially in um and game development all right so just to let you guys know uh, try to do this try uh, we're not maybe try to do this because we'll go over this anyway but we want to learn how to do self-improvement essentially and take that part away uh take that thing from what you learn in gdc and apply it to your life okay and then finally we're gonna like maybe understand few resources that i might give you as an advice on how to start your video games uh, or your new video game projects or your personal game projects, some really great resources that you can use that's on the web. Uh, some of them are paid, but that's up to you if you would like to pay them because they're absolutely perfect for planning your designs and stuff. All right, so without further ado, let's actually begin. Uh, let me just share my screen, all right? Before we actually like talk about the, the, the ideas itself, I actually want to give like a sneak gameplay. I have this thing open on Unity. Uh, it's my game, actually. So I just want to give you an idea that this is probably what our game will look like. Okay, so we have like some, let me press space, we'll accelerate. And if I touch an obstacle, it will get hit and I cannot move it at all. All right. Um, and then it will just spawn back where it was here. So I, over here, you can see that that's the case. Uh, but if we do not press space, it will fall us down. So we have like some sort of force of gravity pulling us down. So it feels a bit more realistic. To make the game a bit more harder, we can pull the character down if he's not using the space bar. So it makes the game a bit more dangerous to play. But we can also see that there is some sort of, um, let me just show you again, because we're going to introduce this uh, in this new section. It's this thing you see right over here. You see that? It's the particle system. We're going to use this particle system. We're going to learn more about it. And it's essentially what's making Unity an amazing game engine software. 
right? And you're using the arrow keys right now to move around the environment. And when you hit something, it creates another explosion effect, again, using the particle system. And you can see that all around here, I implemented the lighting system. And I kind of went over with that, you know, like in the previous section. But I didn't really, I didn't really teach you how to, you know, apply your lighting the way your, your game is really based on so like let's say like your game is a bit more futuristic so the lighting kind of system the lighting design is going to be more different compared to a game that's more like medieval or something like that you know like something like fantasy based each different theme each different game of themes or genres that's maybe a better word is it, it has a different lighting style and this is something that I will also try to go over when we make our own game project, which is the Rocket game. When, I, when I'm going to teach you guys today, by the end of today, to come up with your own genre of the game and decide on, you know, with, what type of game is your genre on. And when we click, you know, when we touch this green pad, it's going to proceed us to the next level. All right. And the goal of the game is to, it, and if I hit again, but you can see that that's moving as well. And we'll also program the stuff we're going to program the objects in the game to move the stuff accordingly you'll be more working more on the scripts and stuff uh to to make the game a bit more well i don't know in, in a way a bit more better than what we did last time so we have a bit more interaction in this game compared to the previous game because in the pre in the previous game you know when we when we hit any obstacles we just change the color but now we're trying to you know make the player actually die in the game and you know restart the game and basically play play the game again as long as the person wins but the thing is the game the, the, the player needs to like uh needs to get to the green point over here and when it does it creates another effect of particle and right now the game is very difficult to play based on the way i designed and again i touched it and now, as I can see, I programmed this as well. We're going to learn how to make more types of interesting obstacles using scripts. And I'm going to try to go... I just hit myself. So now if I hit myself in another level, it will just proceed me back to the level one. Now, I made other people play this game and people realize that, man, I don't like that. I don't like to, you know, well, if, I, if there are five levels in the game and uh, you just take me back to the first level... Uh, you know, I, I don't like that because if you're gonna if you're trying to proceed yourself to winning the game and you all you're at the final level and you die, you're just gonna make the player get mad and smash their keyboard and just break the computers. And that was essentially the reason why I think Flappy Bird got banned from the App Store. And I hopefully don't want that to happen to your game. So, in order to prevent that, we're gonna try fixing that problem so that you know if the player dies at the current scene that they're on, it's just gonna respawn. It's gonna respawn at that current scene it, it is right. And, and we, uh, maybe in the future, you can make like a live system, which we'll learn more about in our final project in the FPS game. And you can, you know, implement that in this game if you would like uh, and maybe make it your final project. Who knows? Another issue was that my friends did not realize that this was level one. So there was no indication. Like it, it's really hard to figure out in the beginning when you start playing the game that this is level one. They don't really remember all the levels that well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Text Mesh Pro. I know that some of you guys have used Text Mesh Pro in your game. So we're going to introduce ourselves to Text Mesh Pro even more and apply that uh, to the back of this game uh, to the back of this game so it kind of gives an indication for the player that oh okay this is the particular level that we're on so it kind of just lets them know where they are currently in the game right um and that's what i want to do like it's really cool actually i'm not playing you, you might not be playing the game you're just probably watching me again so this is more like a gameplay video but actually if you play the game yourself this game is actually really fun but here's another problem you can see my mouse on the screen as well, and we don't want that. And this is something that I'll teach you as well, how to disable the mouse uh, using Unity. Because obviously when you're playing a game that has no uh, mouse input at all, like we see here, uh, then, then we don't really need the mouse to be seen in the game, right? And also we're going to create like an escape button, which I haven't made at all, which I also told you guys to really strictly put that in your game so that when you press the escape button, it just ends the game. Uh, so we're also going to hopefully do that in this game as well so that uh, people can exit the game more conveniently when, they're, when they have downloaded the game. For now, I can just press the Windows button and uh, close that game accordingly. Uh, so today we're going to introduce ourselves, as I said, to the Rocket game. I've, I've shown you gameplay footage of how the Rocket game looks. And you're going to make this Rocket game yourself, which is really fun. And you could share it with your friends and even share it in the GDC server. And the winner, again, this is going to be another contest like what we're doing for this first project. There's going to be another project once we finish this uh, game that we make. And the winner, again, might get some sort of prize. I haven't announced what it is yet. It might be the same as what it is before. But maybe, who knows, maybe Discord Nitro? <laughs> I, I really don't know. 
Um, but yes, I, I really want a lot of people to participate. There's like only two or three people so far in the previous game project who have participated. So hopefully we can have more people uh, getting more interest in making this game as well. All right, hopefully it's going to be fun, as I said. So first thing, how to game design. This is like one of the biggest questions that ever comes up like you, you have a lot of ideas in your head and as I said like in GDC we're trying to help you out like if you have a lot of ideas in your head uh, GDC is gonna uh, try to g give you some tips and advices on how to organize all the things that are in your head and put it in some sort of paper right and in some in some exterior and some something that's exterior to the world like not not inside of your head but but in a way that other people understand what you're trying to mentally on uh, what you're trying to mentally create in your head some ideas that you have and this is actually helpful in daily life as well so if you're trying to communicate with people and you're trying to express your ideas with, to other people uh learning how to game design in some sort of way can help you um be better in communication skills as essentially and it, it just makes you a better person as well and obviously exploring exploring is just the only way to be a better person as well Okay, my, my computer is really lagging. So we know that in the previous uh, game project, we made some sort of like game design intention, right? We, we did something over here uh, where we try to give like an outline, a layout, like I said, like a way to, you know, build your uh, ideation skills, organizational skills in your head. And we, I just wanted to like give you like a, a type of idea of, of one way to approach the game design, like how to design your game, how to plan it out, brainstorm it. One way you could think of it is like these three biggest questions. Like what is the player experience, right? Like it's like for in the previous game, for me, it was like an old retro game because it felt more like an arcade for me. I wanted to, a maze game to feel more like nostalgia, you know, like it brings back the, the old days. It brings back these nostalgic feelings to people. I just want to make that feeling happen when the player plays it. Right, and you want to do that because this is one thing that I taught taught to you about, right? Intention to execution, meaning the thing that you wanted to intend should be executed when you make your final game. This is the, one of the biggest things that you should know as a game developer because that's that's one of the biggest layouts that you should follow when you're trying to make a game and make it successfully happen. Another thing is core mechanics, right? Core me mechanics is how your game will work. So, what's the main purpose of the maze? Maybe, like in other words, what is the thing that your game does? or some interactions, well, the player will basically have to pass through some challenging maze, as I said, and they, have, they will pass between levels and stuff using the scene management that we talked about in the previous uh, lessons. And uh, there's so, so many other things. Right? And then we also talk about the game loop. So, like, you know, what is the pattern in the game? What is that the player will keep on doing? Well, we know that the player in the previous game will just start at some starting point. Then they need to find that that, that their way out of the maze, basically, to the end, right? It's to some end point, which we call the goal goal area the goal pad and then once it touches the goal pad it just approaches to another level and that is basically how the things pa uh, work out and essentially maybe in the end you could like in the final project which we'll do you can make like a windscreen so that when you win you could like approach that windscreen and make some buttons like play again or just exit the game if you would like so this is something that we did last time but now we're going to try something new so for now, before we talk about this new idea that I'll talk about, which uh, I don't want to spoil it out, let's try to apply that idea that we did in the in the first game project and do it to our new game project. Now, we know that this is what our game looks like. It looks a bit better than before uh, because in the previous game project, we're just trying to get introduced to Unity, right? It's, it's not, it should, obviously, our first game project is horrible and it takes more experience to make your games better. So this is our first game, pro uh, this is our next game project that we'll be doing. Uh, and we want to know, for me, my player experience is more like a futuristic game on Mars. Now, this clearly does not look like Mars, right? It's very dark and it's just lights, random lights are on the game. So just ignore this picture when I'm trying to talk about like a futuristic game on Mars. On this next game, I'll try to implement that. I'll try to make that happen. I'll, my intention is to make the person feel like an astronaut on some wandered off planet and they need to find their way out of that thing. Right, and then the core mechanic is to go to the goal point. So basically, you have some starting point here, and the goal point, which we indicate with the light. So we use the, I think, a point light, uh, which helps indicate like the the player that okay, this is where we need to go. So this is how lights can also help you in your game development. And what we did is we made like we made like again a goal script like what we did in the previous game project. We'll make that again over here, and that will just help us approach or in a way, uh, for the player to go to the next level so that they can progress to the game. All right, and then the game loop for our game, for this game project specifically, it's that, again, it just starts at some particular point. It has to go from point A to point B. And really, this time, as we said, like uh, in the previous game, when we touch obstacles, it does nothing, right? But this time, 
we will make the player die and play the level again. So we're going to try to progress our thinking even more, like making the game a bit more like a game, like all the other games we have today. There's like life, life system. And we're going to introduce ourselves to that in this particular game on how it particularly works with Unity. Okay, but before we start, we should always have some sort of like, like an idea, like something on paper. You could draw this on paper, you could draw this on Paint 2D, or you could draw this on Canva or any other digital drawing resources, like maybe even like... Uh, uh, that's like an app on iPad. I just forgot what it is, but like you, you could also use that to design it. Um, so you just want to give like a flat idea of how the thing works. So for me, let me just go back here. Uh, we have two points, right? We have one point over here. The player starts over here and it wants to approach like do, 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 to the next point. So it can progress to the next level. So what we can do is we can use the left and right keys on, on the keyboard to move the character and we can press some sort of space key to boost the character, right? And we saw that in the previous game that uh, when we press the space bar, it boosts the character or something. It, it makes the character move. Now, the thing is we want to make the game a bit more harder than it was what we did for the first project. We want to make the player get some force downwards if they do not boost the object. So it feels a bit more like an actual rocket, right? So if you don't boost the rocket and you're on an atmosphere like, like in this earth and you're going to boost the rocket and then at some point in time where you don't really boost the rocket, well, eventually it's going to come back down, right? So that's the same idea over here. We want to try to add that a bit, uh, a bit sense of realism into our game and make the game a bit more challenging because that's the point. At the same time, while it's a bit more entertaining, you want to make the game more challenging. So it makes the user or the player want to play your game even more and more. And that's just, <laughs> that's just something that people love to do. They just play the game and they want to play until they win the game. And that is something that you make you should you should be aware of as a, as a game developer. You probably are a gamer yourself, and you should kind of notice that you you tend to play games like these kind of stuff, like a maze game or these rocket booster games. You keep on playing it even more because you lose, and in your brain you're gonna be like, "Hey, I do not want to lose. I actually want to win." And you keep on playing and playing and playing, and eventually people will start actually enjoying your game. And this is actually one technique that game developers use to make sure that you know people actually play the game to make it more relevant. All right, and obviously we don't we don't want to just literally go from point A to B. We should add some obstacles to refrain the user to try to find a way to not let it go to its intentional point. Now, when I say to not let it go, don't literally not let it go. So, so don't make like a freaking barrier here where it's just impossible to make the player move without if unless there are any bugs in your game. But or maybe if that's a storyline, like maybe there's an invisible thing here and you have to go through, then maybe that's the case for you. But don't make it impossible, okay? Make it at least a bit possible or make a bit less than very, very impossible so that it doesn't make the gamer stop playing the game. Because if there's anything that's something too easy or too hard, then that's the point where, you know, the gamer is like, yeah, this is just impossible and I'm done. But then once, once you're at this level where, okay, it is hard and challenging, but at the same time fun because of the obstacles, uh, then, you know, we can... We'll, we'll tend to enjoy that. So we can see that there, we're going to also make some moving obstacles. So like maybe this thing can move left and right, left and right to, for it to reach point B. So it makes the game a bit more challenging. Just like what we did last time using transform.rotate, right? We made some spinners in the maze to make the game a bit more fun in some sense. Now it always depends, fun is a really relative word, but it also de it really matters on how you apply all these moving obstacles in the game. If you don't put the moving obstacles together in harmony in your level design, which we're also going to talk about because in the next few lectures, we'll also learn how to level design effectively. Then your game will just be horrible. We do not want our game to be horrible. This is one big thing as a game developer. All right. So just keep that in mind. Now we're going to introduce a new idea. This is called an onion design. All right. Onion design is something you probably might not be aware of. Some of you guys could be aware of it, but most of you, I'm pretty sure that you're, you're probably not even aware of it. All right, so what is an onion design? Well, onion design is another type of thing, like what we did, like the intention to execution start, like the thing that we did, the core game loop, core mechanics, and the player experience. It's, a, it's, it's another approach to game designing, to, to planning your, on, on planning your game. All right, so, you know, like usually how things work, it's literally like an onion. An onion is an oval thing, and it has layers and layers of it uh, until it's in our inner part, which is like the core, right? So similarly, we could take it as an analogy that the core part of that onion is that most important feature in your game, right? And then the, the layer after that is the second most important feature in your game. Then the no, next layer is the third most important, and, and so on and so forth. It, it follows that same pattern. And what this helps you do, essentially, is that... It, it helps you layer out all the ideas, all the, all the priorities in your game. Because what will happen 
when you're trying to build your own game is you will not know what is more important than the other. You will not notice that you will not be able to figure out maybe like uh, what is important, uh, what 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 we need to do first, what we need to do last. If you do not organize yourself like the to-do list on what to do, then your game could really just become garbage. And this is something we don't want to happen. We don't want our game to be garbage. Otherwise, people will not like your game. So... Using Onion Designs will just help you know what to focus on more rather than other things because people tend to focus on the less important things when they should be focusing on the main thing. All right, so the, these Onion Designs can help you figure out that what you should focus on more than other features in your game. All right, so like like over here, it's like all features need to feed the core. So when I'm trying to say that, what, what I'm trying to say here is all the other cores, all the other layers that are outside of the core that that, that is like covering or surrounding the core. It should actually help the core, the, the core idea to make it better. And this is why I actually appreciate the onion design because the onion design, it, it's really effective understanding how, also understanding how each different features help accomplish your core to even be better, right? Maybe just not accomplishing, but even making your game essentially better. Your core feature is essentially what's driving your game to be, well, a game, all right? so. To, the reason why we use these things is because, well, there's some questions that people ask, like, what features should I include in my game? Like, like uh, if you're making like a car game, you don't know what features to add because you're playing other games and you feel like you will be out of the competition because they tend to do better with their own features. And then you get this sense of concern whether your game will be more successful or not. Well, this is where, you know, Onion Design can help you. Or maybe another question is like, where should I start my development? Where should I start? Like, should I start with the movement? Should I start with the, the, the level design? Should I start with the character design? Should I start with the story design? And onion design, the onion design will help de determine the answer because you know what's the core feature in your game. And that will help you focus on what you should focus the most on in your own game. And then finally, like what, maybe not finally, I don't know how many lists are there, but the other thing is like, what are my priorities, right? The, the onion design will help you list out one of these priorities. You'll know what is less important, what is more important. And once you know how to discern between each different features in your game, rather knowing, like by knowing what is more important than the other, then that will actually help you uh, develop your game much better. It, it will help you make your game much better than it was before, right? It will just help you keep yourself up to ta up to date. Not maybe not up to date, but but to the point, to the task. Like you'll, it'll just help you stay focused, really, on what you should focus on the most. And it's it's a really really great tool to to use when you're making your games. Or maybe another question can be like, what if I run out of my time? You know, run out of time because time is really sensitive. When you make your own game projects, and especially people like us, who, or maybe not, let's just say us, because a lot of people love doing last minute stuff. Uh, you tend to run out of time. And people people sense to raise concerns on it. So usually the onion design will help you like plan out what you should work on first, and then what you should work on last, so that you know it's maybe the game can be a bit better than the garbage level of a game in terms of rating. Okay, and then also when should I stop? So by knowing the priorities, you can also know that okay, is the game doesn't does it really necessarily need a, a particular feature like this when you're running out of time, and that will help you know when I should stop, right? Because even having a lot of features in your game, it's not really going to make your game amazing. The main part that makes your game really fun is, well, the way you make the player interact with the player. Uh, the, the, sorry, the way you make your player interact with the game characters, right? If you don't really make a sense of cool uh, interaction between the character and the, and the game character, then it's not going to be that fun, right? And people do that by using uh, game features. Like, you know, uh, some people use, like, voice to voice to text recognition or if you start talking then you know the ghost can hear you so it kind of creates that cool game features but game features isn't like the thing that makes the game the actual game there are many other parts to it that actually should also be accomplished right like the storyline perhaps or the character design and we covered about this we covered about how to make a character design in the previous lectures and you could go check that out on our channel if you would like um, but yes, this is very important. Like you need to know when is the limit. Like you, you should not go too much in terms of game mechanics. Otherwise, people will not tend to enjoy uh, the too much of something, right? Because obviously, too much of anything is just horrible. All right. So for let's just give an example of at least for our own Rocket game, we want to figure out what is the most core feature. Then what are some things that are layering on it? Well, the first is I think. The most core, the most important feature 
for this game is movement. And when I say movement, it's like flying around in the game. Because the purpose of a rocket, right, is to, well, basically, it's not about walking or anything, but it's 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 flying. It's, it's going up in the air, moving up in the air, and going through space, and doing all that cool stuff, basically. So for our game, we are using rockets to fly, and we're trying to make the player try to feel like they're riding their own rocket, right? Because rocket has... A particular mass so it's very heavy and it takes a bit of uh, strength for it to go up I, maybe I'm, I don't know if there's a good word for it but it takes a lot of uh, time and str and a lot of tension uh, maybe ten t there's many meanings of tension like in physics tension is different but it takes a lot of strength in in terms of that to make the rocket go up and you want to make the player feel like they're just flying in the game that they are the rocket themselves that they're riding their own rocket you shouldn't make the player feel like they're making a character walk when it's a rocket game so we need to make sure that the most important feature that must be accomplished is that the player is 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 able to fly the rocket itself in the game but another thing that we could add that as a as an extension to the game is world collision. So we can add like obstacles to make the game a bit more fun than it was before, right? Because having obstacles in the game can make the player feel challenged. You know, find uh, challenge themselves in uh, in finding particular techniques or strategies to get to the end point of the game. So it kind of builds up your your skills inside of your brain. It kind of makes the person. I, in a way, the game could actually be good for the person because it, it, it kind of challenges their brain to do better in terms of strategic thinking and stuff. And that's what we want, right? We want to make the the person uh, really, really entertained and at the same time, probably also possibly uh, maybe increase the rate of, motor, uh, of, of gray matter inside of your brain. If you want to learn more about these things, there, there's so many cool science, there's so much cool science uh, behind game game itself. Uh, you could check out my TED Talk. It's also on the resources. Um, I've explained a lot about gray matter and how games can also, you know, make your uh, brain function a bit better. All right, and maybe finally, which I want to do as well, as an extension to to movement and flying it's that level progression so as you get to a particular point in the game that should possibly not really be the end of the game right it shouldn't really hopefully end just at one level you should try to make some progression levels and as you progress through each level it gets a bit more difficult it gets even more difficult and when you get to the final level it's maybe not maybe it's maybe nearly impossible but not really that impossible when i say nearly impossible like don't don't make them cry all right <laughs> i don't want people to cry but you can do that if you want, if that's your core game loop. But that was mine, okay? But now today, I want to talk about how to start a project. Obviously, you guys know by now how to open a Unity project. You guys know how to download Unity because you all have that stuff ready. You, so you already learned about these things in the previous lectures already. Uh, so today, I actually want to give like maybe a step-by-step -step way of maybe approaching to game design. One really cool way to approach the game design. So let's begin. But before we start, I actually want to start off with a quote. Once you know the why, you know the how. Maybe I said it, maybe it was by me, I don't know. But I saw this somewhere on the web, um, and it really actually it actually sparked me a lot in terms of thinking that this is actually true. Once you know the reason why you're making a particular game, then it will be really easy to... It, it'll be really easy, maybe that's a better way to put it. It'll be really easy to do the how part, the, the do part and stuff. Because you always need to be motivated by something, right, in life. Like, if you want to make something happen you need to be motivated for doing it and the way you can be motivated is by understanding why you want to make the game like you should always try to reflect on yourself why do you want to be a game designer or why did you join the gdc specifically you want to try learning something new or you want to expand your knowledge or you want to try to be a better person than before or maybe even like get a game developer job you know like make a triple a video game maybe that's why you want to make this game uh, or maybe practice yourself, train yourself. There's so many reasons. Try to figure that out. Try to give yourself some time. This is not like a homework assignment. Try to reflect it at your own time, uh, wondering like why you want to make a particular game when you're going to make one. And then after knowing that, you will actually know how to do it because your brain now has some sense of motivation and then it will activate some other uh, parts in your brain to help, co uh, to, to help actually function, to, to actually understand how to do, how to actually make the game. Like when I say how to make the game, it's like organizing the game, planning the game, brainstorming the game. And then a lot of ideas will spark in your head. It will motivate you to do more, right? Because you have a sense of motivation in your brain. And that's what, that's why when I say you know the how, you probably don't exactly know the how because there's so many approaches. There's so many ways to make a game. Um, but it will be easier for you. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Okay. So first thing is to analyze 
and dissect your idea at the, at the fullest potential. Okay, so when I say this, simplify your idea to its fullest potential. What I mean by this is, <coughs> is that uh, try to like break break down your idea as much as you can, like break down to its most simplest idea possible. When when I not when I say that, I say like let's say I want to make a game about uh, F, like 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 an FPS shooter game, right? But you want to kind of break down to its most potential. Like, what are you going to specifically do in your own game? And once you know the base, the base ground, the, the base f- groundwork and foundation of your game, then it will lead you into making a much better game because you now know the base, the, 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 the bottom most part. And you kind of know how to now fully approach the game. You have kind of reversed work, reversed worked out of your brain on understanding how the game will, how, how the game will actually proceed, how it will work and stuff. And from that point on, you now have a you have you now have some so- some sense of path on how to start making your game, how to build it. Now, when you do these, make sure don't put this in your brain. Try to put that somewhere. Try to put it on paper. Try to put it on a Google document. Try to put it on Microsoft Word. Try to write out your ideas because you're most probably gonna forget it, right? Uh, second thing is to utilize the onion design. So as I said, uh, this is gonna be one of your assignments. You're gonna have to develop an onion design, not for your game. I'm gonna explain a bit later, but you utilize the onion design. It will help lay out your groundwork when you're analyzing your idea. So after you have like, you know, simplified your idea, start making your onion design because that will now help you. What is the most core important part in your game? That's essentially making your game a video game, right? And some guiding questions could be like, well, what is it that my game will really do? Now, just a- asking yourself these questions won't really give you the exact answer. You will need to give your time to think about it. And that that really means reflection, right? So take your time to think about these things. You don't just get your answer uh, right, right at the spot. Uh, another question could be like, how will the game interact with the player? So like, what is something that in your game that that is that is interacting? Obviously, we know it's Unity, but try to dig deeper. Try to understand how will you do that? Try to figure that out in your head. It will take time. It will hurt your brain. You might not even be able to sleep. But asking these type of questions is essentially going to help you get the answers. Uh, and also maybe like, what is something? What is that something in your game that is essentially making that wow factor in your game? What is that What is that something in the game that is going to make your game more interested by others, more more fascinated by others, more attracted? Um, yeah. So something like that. Think of, think of it about it. Think of it. And then also, let me just move my... Uh, thing here uh, what is it that oops what is it like what what is it uh, uh why is it that you're trying to make that idea come true right like a lot of people uh they're like they're like i make a game just for making a game but like you're not gonna get motivated like i said you want to really figure out why you're making this specific game you could make millions of other games in the entire planet uh you can you can make many other games like a maze game an adventure game uh a, a battle royale game. But why are you specifically making this type of game? And why do you want it to come true? Once you know the answer to these type of questions, then you're really you're really good to go in your in your project development. Okay? Then the next part is really come up with a project name. Now when I say a project name, I do not mean the final name of your project. Like for Overwatch, it was actually called Project Titan. So what I want to get, what what I also want you guys to do today, uh, as like a as a mini assignment, is basically come up with a project name. Usually, all project names start with the word project, and then then they say some other random word. So Titan, right? Like that's something. Maybe that's something symbolic in Overwatch, or it's just something that motivates the developers of Overwatch to make that game, right? So here are some ways that I found out to make a cool project name. Uh, one is to find this word that means something deep to you. So you could do that uh, by going over to going over the internet and looking for some random words. So you could just type on Google random words and maybe find some words in Greek and Latin. Some names of the like like Facebook Meta. Meta is I think a Greek word or a Latin word which means uh, beyond, and it has some meaning to it because Mark Zuckerberg always thinks that the world is is beyond something, and that is that is encouraging us to be a better person than before because there's always this beyond there's some some idea of beyond that 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 proceeds in our head all right so even though we find answers in life there's going to be something that we don't know and we call that something beyond our knowledge and that's why facebook made that name so there should be something that means a lot to you and while you try to look for these words try to you know, you know relate something in your game like project titan um 
Titan can be like a hero or something, right? And that's something in Overwatch. Overwatch had heroes trying to save the planet. So like something like Titans. So there should be some sort of thing that's relating to your game. But make sure the name doesn't fully tease your game, right? There's some games are like, they, they don't know this, but they just spoil the entire game itself. And please, please don't ever spoil their game because you're just going to get a bad image of yourself. Um, <laughs> so I, I, think, I think everyone knows about this, but just make sure that your game doesn't, give any spoilers or any indication that something is definitely going to be in the game okay try to make it fully like a uh, secret like don't try to not fully uh, relate the name to your game itself try to make some very uh, vague words some abstract words which no one will ever understand that oh that titan is going to become overwatch okay so this is something that i wanted to talk about because this is really important and this specific word is also going to be like a building motivation a, a motivation driver that will essentially help you really make the game. So you will, you can look back at this word and think, <laughs> think in your brain. I know it sounds really cheesy, but you will, you will get this once, once you start making your own games. That, okay, the word Titan, you know, like the Titan has something that means to you, and that is gonna be like a building driver for you to make that game. Whenever you get depressed or whenever you get like, man, I give up and stuff, uh, then you can always look back at these words. Now, this is also another thing that I'll be making you guys do today, is uh, making a mood board, all right? So what a mood board is basically like a set of pictures on, on, on social media. So you can actually like just go to Google and, and type mood boards. So mood boards are like something like this, like just something random, many, many random pictures. It's like a good idea would be something like this like people just take all the pictures that they like maybe something with color something with texture and they just put it in one screen right they just put it in one whole screen and uh what we did is i want you guys to also make a mood board and mood boards can essentially uh they can ultimately give a solution to what kind of theme your game will be driving on okay so if you're if you're looking for some random pictures so what you can do is like go to google and just search for some broad keyword keywords right so it could be like uh, a marble or marble color or uh, black marble gray marble <laughs> let's not talk about marbles maybe like futuristic or cyberpunk neon lights just just get some random keywords that you really like that that, that interest you and just you know scroll to google if you like something just copy the image and just paste it somewhere okay and i'll talk a bit more about where you should paste it you could also paste it on google doc if you would like um but yeah, uh, type your favorite colors or maybe like textures of the side. So maybe a marble or I don't know, a specific texture that looks interesting as well. Uh, just, just search it up. So search up the thing that interests you. And then once you fill out, just reflect over that mood board you did. You need to fill out this entire uh, page uh, itself. Usually all mood boards are like A4 sized. So don't worry about the sizing and stuff. It's always A4. But once you have filled it out, just look over it. Like go, like think from the outside of that box and just see what you've uh, made. And from what you've made, you can figure out like, uh, like what 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 really interests you. Like the colors that interest you. That so that could be like the color combinations that you can utilize in your game. And um, you know, uh, looking at some characters that can also help you. Uh, get inspired by making your own type of characters with it with its with its own meaning, its own backstory, its own pers personality, uh, and stuff. And also, essentially, in the end, it can also re help you realize that what type of theme you want your game to be. Like futuristic, cyberpunk. A theme would not be a good word. Maybe a better word here would be like a genre. And from that genre, it can break you down into knowing, okay, this is where I want to go. I want to go into like like cyberpunk type of game, and and that can that can help you like. Uh, connect to you with the game mechanics so that when you make those type of features it should follow that type of genre that type of theme if you put like swords in a cyberpunk game but a medieval type of sword it doesn't really fit right so this is why i really want you guys to use mood boards because this is what designers use and i know that a lot of you are not designers here but i want you to try being a designer try being something that you can even though you even though you know you can't be because doing something is always better than doing nothing right um, so just make out this mo mood board uh, and hopefully you should be able to, uh, you know, make that thing as needed. All right. Uh, and it will help you make a better game. And finally, I want you to fill out this game design intention. So based on what you got, all that information you got, try to write it in a Google Doc, try to write it in a paper. Uh, once you have all that done, uh, you know, then essentially 
uh, fill out this game design intention. So now you should know what the play experience should be. You should know the core mechanic in your game. You should know the core loop in your game. Connect the onion design with this thing. And always remember, intention to execution. Whatever you intended to happen in your game, that should definitely be executed in your final project. If that's not possible, try to make sure it's at least somewhat executing that. Otherwise, maybe you're not going to be following your path and things can go off. And uh, maybe sometimes you're just not going to make your game possible. Uh, to be uh, your game may not also possibly get successful if this doesn't really happen right uh and if you can't fill this out don't worry go try to go back try to see what is missing uh if you're missing some information if you feel like you're lost always get some advice from gdc because there are people like me who have some experience in game development um i started from scratch so obviously um i started from the ground then i moved to java and adobe flash and now i'm in unity hopefully in the future we're gonna go to uh swift for ios development and for gaming because apple arcade is getting really big but then we can also use unreal engine as well hopefully i'll be teaching that as well in the future coming times but yeah there's just some people in the world who have experience to so try to get those advice from those and you can always ask some really great and nice questions in our gdc server if you ever feel lost all right so this is basically it for the gdc meeting let me just move uh this thing in here I, apparently i disconnected for a moment um yeah so i'm so, I'm so sorry i felt i think i disconnected all right so before I end this meeting, I just wanted, I'll send you out some assignments and one of the assignments will be like, you know, uh, I kind of, I brought my paper here luckily, is to come up with a theme using the mood board. So you're going to have to use a mood board and stuff. Actually, I kind of forgot one more thing to talk about. Let me just click on this. Uh, so I wanted to talk about some mood boards that existed. One of the most popular mood boards out there is called Milanote. Milanote is really, really good. Uh, I like it. And it's just a place to uh, design your ideas and make that come true, right? It's just a place to organize all your ideas. It's just like a, a blank canvas that where you could just add all your ideas. So how it works is once you add the mood board, you can right click and create a new board. So for this, I could, for me, my project name was Project, uh, project Boost. It's going to load. But what we can do is we can double click on this and... Uh, we have like uh if so if, I, if I actually move this here uh we have like different options here so like they have some ready-made templates for you uh like they already have some mood board ideas ready so what people do is people can go over the internet so like if i go over the internet and i type uh you know let's just type ducks okay i don't know something random uh and i and i, and I see okay hey I, I like this picture what i can do is just copy this image I can, uh, you know, right click and now apparently first, if I say use this template, I can like, uh, I can just like, I think con control V, uh, and like, you know, just drag it, dra drag it to each thing and mood boards. So mood boards is kind of like organizing all of your ideas together and visualizing what is your interest in, in your, in your own game. All right. So I'm, I'm just going to make a new, a uh, test two. And actually, instead of making a, uh, instead of making something like this, I can just actually teach you all these other things. They have interesting columns. Uh, you can like, you can call each whatever you want. But inside of that, you can make your to-do list, and then you can probably make another column here. And this could be about like, um, let's say some some some, maybe not that. Maybe like uh, maybe something you want to write about, right? Something like a note, or you could even add more inside if you would like. Uh, there's a lot you can do. You can also add like a line. You can draw arrows, like try to visualize yourself, try to lay out your design and everything. This is a really, really great stuff. However, they have limited space for free, uh, for free uh, version. So you just need to keep that in your mind for that. But hopefully, I think you shouldn't take up too much of the space. So uh, Milanote is free to download. You could get that. Uh, I'll, I'll add that in the resources tab if you'd like to add. But there are some other great alternatives. Like there is Miro. Miro is a, it's a similar thing. Uh, you could always get the the free version. I'm probably not going to click on it because uh, it, uh, I need to log in or something. But this is a really great thing. It's similar as Milanote. Another thing is Mural. Mural is the same thing, except you could, you know, collaborate even more. Um, and also, finally, Spike. Spike is also now available on Oculus Quest and Quest 2. So if you would like to work in VR, apparently that's a thing now. And that's really, really cool. I really appreciate that. So it's something like, you know, you could chat with each other. But at the same time, 
he could also have like a task and do to or like notes and documents where he could collaborate but spike is more on collaboration okay so if you're trying to make your own indie game and you're the only person developing it spike is probably not the place for you to develop all this stuff it's probably going to be millinote for that okay so here's some great resources i'll add that all in the resources tab really soon after this meeting ends but that's what i wanted to like uh let you guys know okay so once you guys make your own uh you know things today for your for your mood boards just try to use some of these resources and paste them as needed and in, in uh, the in the submissions channel Okay, and then come up with the project name. So it should start with the word project and then some random word that you get inspired by every day. And finally, you want to use that onion design. Try to, so just go around your house. Just get any random object, okay? Like uh, a really random object would be like, like this electric sharpener that I have, okay? And try to develop an onion design for this thing, okay? So what I want you guys to do is probably create like a Google document, attach a picture of this, or maybe maybe not a Google document. You might need to use something like Canva or something. But create that onion design. Know what's the core feature of a particular thing you choose around your house. Then just put like two to three, three at most, uh, additional features of that. And try to layer it out. And people can have conversations about that. And you'll need to share that soon in the submissions channel. Okay? So that's basically it about today's meeting. I really want you guys to also head off soon because I also have to head off somewhere as well. But I hopefully this meeting was really fun. And um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining and stay creative. Peace, peace guys.